Good morning. It's Wednesday again and time for another thought for the week. Well, here we are in the second week of second month of 2021 and I think a lot of you know that during most of January Sue and I and our family were in lockdown with COVID. We all had the COVID-19 and um, we couldn't go out anywhere for most of the month because we contracted it at different times and so on. And during that time, it obviously, when you have something that is potentially potentially lethal, it makes you think. And um, one of the things um, we found too, that you needed things to do to pass the time because you can't sit and watch telly all day long. It drive you bonkers. So I began to think about restarting my family history research using one of these apps online and um, even to write my own biography. I thought it doesn't matter if nobody else reads it but um, at least I can gather my thoughts and get it done on paper. So I began to do that. And um, once you start probing your memories you, you trigger off other memories and things come back to you that you might not have thought about for years. And one of the things that came out um, as I pondered was how the area that I grew up in has changed so much over the years. Now, they say that people remember more of what they see than what they hear. So if I rambled on for five or ten minutes and told you a lot of stuff, um, you probably forget it in five or ten minutes. So I was wondering if you could come with me, if I ask you to imagine what I'm going to describe. And maybe that will help you to remember it, because one of the, the basic theme, and if you forget everything else I say today, here's the point of this message. Because I, I read somewhere that when you preach or teach, you should say what you're going to say, say it, and then say what you've said. And that sort of drives it home so basically what i'm going to say is our god doesn't change he's the same god who was god when jesus walked the earth as he is today when we're sending people to the moon and rockets to mars and everything is super sophisticated so in all of that god doesn't change but all around us things change the older you are the more you realize that so come with me for a minute back to my childhood. Now, in order to imagine where I grew up, I grew up in South Wales, as I keep harking on about, um, but we grew up in a semi-rural area. Um, can you imagine a mountain? Now, if, you, if I say to you, imagine a mountain, you're probably thinking of the Alps, but you need to tone it down a bit, because the mountains in the area where I lived were not rocky. Um, think of a very high hills, if you like, um, mountains covered in earth, covered in uh, mostly grass, with trees going up so far to the tree line. Hopefully you know what that is. And um, so imagine this mountain in the distance, sloping down towards you. Uh, on the higher slopes, there's just nothing but grass. Um, and as you come further down, there's some trees and uh, still fields and so on. And then imagine, if you would, a, a single row of houses. Now, I lived on a, on a road called Stafford Road, which was made up of probably about 20 houses and that had been built in the Victorian times out of stone. And it uh, was on this hillside. Behind the house was, we had a, a small garden, only about 20 feet. And then behind that was allotments. And that was all fenced in. And then behind the allotment and the fencing, there was a field rising quite steeply up a grassy field where mostly sheep and sometimes cows would be grazing. And that's the environment. In the front of the house, there were no houses opposite. We, had a, we were on the main road and um, we were near a bridge. At the end of the road was the bridge, the um, railway that was built in the 1800s uh, to, to bring coal down from the valleys. And... Uh, in front of that, a few hundred yards down the hill, further down the hill, was a canal, which had been built even earlier, 17-something or other, 
which was the major uh, Monmouthshire Brecon Canal that again was carrying coal and uh, tin plate. The things that they make ships out of were made in Pontypool, where near where I lived. And so imagine this canal. So from the view of the house, you've got the you've got the railway running up towards the house on the left with the bridge there at the end of the road, the trains running under the bridge. Steam trains, when I was a kid, the steam used to bellow up round over the bridge and if you got there just in time, you'd find yourself in this sort of miniature cloud of steam. And <clears throat> sloping down to the canal, and then beyond the canal was a flat field, and beyond that were the marshalling yards, which was the largest marshalling la yard in its time in Wales. It had a, a number of um, a, an area that was the, called the um, for the military for coal that was needed for the ship's bunkers to to power the engines uh, of these steamships and the coal they had a whole load of sidings for for that especially for that that's how big it was important and all the coal from the valleys would come through Pontypool down to these marshalling yards before di being distributed around the country. So I don't know if you visualise that at all. But everything, all of that is now gone except for the canal. The canal was the first thing that was built in the area and the canal is still there. And we have one in Harlow, don't we? The canal uh, near the, the river there. And, it, you know, it goes back probably 200 years now, the canals. That's one thing that hasn't changed much. But from my house, you could, uh, you come to the end of Stafford Road, you'd, you'd walk over the bridge, and as you walk down the hill then, the road uh, skirted the railway. Um, in fact, there were two railways. It branched, not again, not far from us, and it branched. So one went up the valleys to Pontypool, and the other one also went to Pontypool, but it went up a different valley. Pontypool has a, a like a, a fork in the valley. So if you went to the right, you go up towards Blanavon, which is now a World Heritage Site for the early uh, steel industry. And if you branched off to the left, uh, it went through to the valleys for the coal and so on. And at the bottom of the first hill, there was a bridge over the railway. And it had two lots of steps going up one side, so you could come from either direction. And it went, then went over the over the railway, and then one set of steps down the other side. So guess what? We call that the three-legged bridge. And we pretty much took it for granted when we were kids. I used to go down it to play with a friend who lived the other side of it, and um, you know, it's it's a sort of bit of a landmark, but. It's gone now. The railway is gone now. They built a new road. So further down the hill, you got to the bottom of the hill, to what is called Ponty Moyle Corner, and you turned right, and there was this bridge under the railway, all big, massive stone-built bridge. And right behind the bridge was the chapel, where I was sent along as a child, and all our family on my mother's side belonged to the chapel. At one time, this chapel had 120 children in it, in the Sunday school. It was that big. Chapel governed our lives. The, the annual anniversary was a big affair. That's when we got our new suit as a kid. Um, you'd get a new suit, mum would get a new dress, a new hat, and the anniversary was a big, big affair. The chapel's gone now. They redeveloped the area to build this new bypass road, and the chapel itself was demolished and they were given a new site just a few hundred yards away but it's now a modern building they did well out of it really because the old chapel was a bit basic but they even managed to take the pipe organ with them so that has survived but Pontymore Corner is not what it was it's gone now when the trains passed the bridge right near our, our house it went a few hundred yards and onto a viaduct and I remember going to school, you could, you'd pass under this viaduct and if you shouted out, it would all echo under the, underneath the arches. And that was built in about 1857, 1859, something like that. But it's gone now. Massive stone, solid 
really rocks, you know, literally rock solid um, stone, but it's gone. There's nothing there. You wouldn't have known it was it ever existed. And Pontypool itself, a bit before my time, was, was the home of some of the early tin plates. It was the first place that they made what they call a rolling mill. They used to make tin plate originally by taking a piece of uh, a lump of metal and they would hammer it, literally hammer it flat. And, and while it was still red hot, and they would hammer it and hammer it and hammer it and it would get thinner and thinner and thinner and you'd end up with this uh, sheet of, of, of tin, of, of, of iron. And um, it was, there, because they'd hammered it, it, it wasn't perfectly smooth. It was, it was covered in hammer marks, you know, and that was the best they could do. But then some genius from Staffordshire came down and, decided uh, to basically, uh, you know what, a, um, he produced the first rolling mill, which basically was, was steel rollers um, compressing, um, like, a, like a mangle, the old-fashioned mangle, and they would pass the steel through red hot each time, and each time it went through a little bit thinner, they would tighten down the screws and make it a bit thinner until they could roll out the steel and make it smooth and flat, because there was no hammering now, it was just done with rollers. And that was all pioneered and started in Pontypool. But guess what? It's all gone now. I mean, from that, they built massive steelworks, the one that's still in um, Swansea, uh, not Swansea, uh, Port Albert, uh, is still struggling on, but it's, it's, it is struggling. Um, massive steelworks, the one at Llanwern. Now, my dad, when uh, he first, when my first memory of my dad working was in, in a glassworks, Pilkington Glassworks in Pontypool. Uh, where they pioneered again the first float glass because originally glass um, I don't know how they did it but basically it was uh, this new process meant that they floated the liquid glass onto I think it was um, mercury or it might have been tin and um, and it produced a very flat glass that we all know today as ordinary glass but it, it was the first time they'd done it the glass was perfectly flat and if you visit an old stately home you look at windows sometimes and as you look at it, the, the image you're seeing through the window is all slightly distorted because the glass isn't actually flat. It's slightly angled and so on. <clears throat> but that was Piety and Pontypool. But guess what? That's gone now. It's no longer there. And from there, my dad later on got a job in Clanburn in the big steelworks there, the brand new steelworks built in the 60s and 70s, I think it was. Um, massive. They built whole housing estates to house the workforce and there was literally thousands employed there but if you go there now it's all gone it's all gone everything changes the three-legged bridge is gone the uh, the field behind the allotments behind our house that we all played on and so on that's all gone they build houses on it now things change one of the other things on Stafford Road was at the other end, away from the bridge, the at the far end, was a spout. A little bit unusual. Just along the side of the road, there was a stream that came down the mountain, and the stream um, was fed into this pipe. And it was imagine the um, uh, the, uh, the end of a cannon, the old-fashioned cannon. You know that sort of size, about about uh, what five inches in diameter. You could put your arm up it if you so. F felt inclined um, and out of that flowed all the time 24 hours a day this spout of water and my dad used to go and collect the water in cans because he, he was a winemaker and he wanted fresh water that didn't have any chemicals in it so he, he'd get this fresh mountain water and one day the council came along and just did it did away with it they 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 piped the stream underground and the spout disappeared and this was uh, there was an outrage because the spout marked the the end of Griffith's town which was the the next town uh, and Pontypool and they'd done away with this landmark so there was a big local outrage and eventually they agreed to reinstate it so instead of it being like all greenery and, and natural looking with this pipe sticking out of the out of the bank um, they built a, a a very nice tidy brick um, enclosure and put this little pipe in there which is about two inches round and out of that comes a trickle of water so they sub satisfied the complainers but it's nothing like it does not look like the old spout as 
I remember as a kid, things change all the time. But I'm telling you all this because it just sort of brings home to me, uh, brought home to me during January as I was trying to get this down on paper and remembering we have a God who does not change. And no matter whether we're fighting our way through a virus, whether we are struggling with other illnesses, with all the other things we have to cope with are still there, aren't they? The rheumatism and the um, other issues that we deal with, the cancers and so on. Um, it's still there. But God does not change. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We all know that verse. We all know that promise and it is never changed. And he cares for us. I was thinking of that old hymn, Abide With Me, and there's a, there's a little bit in that uh, that says, O thou who changest not, abide with me. And he does. And it's worth remembering that. And I've been talking now for over 16 minutes. I can't believe it. So I'm going to stop now. But just remember that. Whatever's going on in your life, remember we have a God that doesn't change.